This is linear functions part one, and we're talking about linear equations in two variables, where those two variables are x and y. And linear equations in two variables can be written in the form y equals mx plus b, where m and b are both constants. Some of you may also remember y equals mx plus b as slope-intercept form. A linear function is a function whose graph is a non-vertical line. It has a constant rate of change and can be represented by a linear equation in two variables, so it can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. Where a nonlinear function is a graph that is not a line. It does not have a constant rate of change and cannot be represented by a linear equation in two variables. It cannot be written in the form y equals mx plus b. We've got many different ways of representing our functions. Here are some of the most common ways we see our functions represented. We can just write them in words. We can describe the pattern that we see. So an output is three more than the input. We can also change that into an algebraic equation. So our outputs are represented by our y values and our inputs are our x values. So here we're saying an output is our input plus three. y equals x plus three. We can also put some information from our function in an input-output table. So since every output is three more than the input, we can put a whole bunch of pairs in our input-output table. So negative one and two, this is three more than my input, zero and three, and so on. A mapping diagram does the same thing. It just connects our inputs and outputs with arrows. A graph actually takes our input-output pairs writes them as coordinates, so our input would be our x-coordinate and our output is our y-coordinate, and we turn that into a single point that we can graph using the x and the y-axis. And then we can see a pattern with our input-output points and we can connect them. So let's identify some linear functions by looking at their graphs. So when I'm looking at a graph like this, I notice, yes, it is a function, but it has a curve to it, not a constant rate of change. So this would represent a nonlinear function. Whereas here, I have a straight line. It's not a vertical line. I notice that as I go across the graph and my x values here are increasing, so are my y values, the line is going up. This represents a linear function. It's a straight line and I see that it has a constant rate of change. I can also identify linear functions by looking at different tables. So here we have some input output tables. Our inputs are our x values and our outputs are our y's. So I notice here on this table that my inputs are going from 3 to 6 to 9 to 12. So they are increasing with each jump. And I notice that every single time, they're increasing by three. So I have a constant rate of change here with my input values. But I also have to check my output values. I notice that they are decreasing with each jump here. And each time, they decrease by six. So I have a constant rate of change with my y values or my outputs also. So this represents a linear function. Just like in the last example, my input values are increasing with each jump. Except this time, I have an increase here of 2, 2, and 2. Still a constant rate of change. But I also have to check my output values. They're also increasing, except here I have an increase of 7, then I have an increase of 11, then I have an increase of 15. So though they're increasing, it's not a constant rate of change. Therefore, this is a nonlinear function. Lastly, I can identify linear functions by looking at their equations. Remember, equations of linear functions can always be represented by the form y equals mx plus b, where m and b are constants. We have to remember that those constants can be 1 or 0. 
So when I'm looking at this equation right here, it initially looks like it's sort of in the y equals mx plus b form, except I don't have an m value. Well, I can put a ghost one in there. It's just a single x, and now it's in that form. So this represents a linear function. This guy looks to only have a single constant, y equals 3.8. But if I can imagine my y could have been 0, 0 times x would be 0, plus 3.8 would give me 3.8. Here it is in that y equals mx plus b form. This also represents a linear function. Here I have 2 divided by x. Now with division, there's no way to turn it into the y equals mx plus b format. So this is going to be a nonlinear function. Here I have 3 divided by 5x. Well, I have a constant here. 3 over 5 can be reduced to 0.6x. And then I can add 0. So I have the y equals mx plus b format. So this represents a linear function. This one is going to be nonlinear because I never have a squared variable in my um, linear functions, so automatically I know I can't put it in the form y equals mx plus b, so it represents a nonlinear function.